Hello YouTube, it's the moment that at least two of you have been waiting for. Time to tear into the ninja. And if you're wondering if I'm wearing the same clothes as I was in the last video, it's because I am, because time is an illusion and YouTubers are just here to sell you a fake version of themselves. <sighs> So the first thing I'd like to address on this bike is this brake lever because it is an affront to nature and humanity and needs to just disappear. Looks like we've got four Allen heads, one of which we just straight up can't get to. I have a new one here from the internet that cost me about $80. So let's um, work on making this um, suck a bit less. Behold, all off of there and uh, in multiple pieces now. Here's the part that snapped off and the uh, wonderful holes put in it with uh, random fasteners. I went ahead and left the master cylinder here. Uh, the master cylinder that came with this new brake assembly was, I mean, I'd have to bleed it if I put that on and I uh, don't want to deal with that. So I'm just gonna stick everything back onto here. You've got the sensor for, um, turning on the brake light, and then we just gotta put the master cylinder back on there. Uh, no adjustment needed because there's just a cotter pin and a cross pin that go in here to hold it on. So that's all nice and good. And uh, that'll be a massive improvement. Hey, wow, look at that. There's a brake lever on here and it does stuff. Let's see real quick if it still activates the brake light. Just gonna go ahead and uh, turn the bike on. Okay, there we go. Yep, that's good. Do we have anything? can't tell. Cool. Hey, how about that? That feels good and sturdy. Get that tightened down. We'll move on to probably the tank, I guess. Now, this, as you can see, this is just a proper mess. Uh, let's let's see here. We've got some, yeah, just, just regular old wood screws holding their uh, clothes to there. Let's see what's going on with these. What I'm worried about here is that this is just irreversibly trashed the threat. I don't want that going off where I can't see it. That's how it ends up in a tire. What I'm worried about is the threads just being irrecoverably screwed, literally, and not being able to put in my new, what's holding that in? Oh, that guy. Not being able to put in my replacement fuel lid with key. I'm not so sure about all this. Uh, let's just go get the new part and well, I guess I'll have to go buy some screws actually. I don't have a... Here we have our new fuel lid looking pretty but only held in with one screw because uh, these are all fouled up and the hardware store is closed. But this is reasonably solid so I'm gonna call that good for now so let's move on to this ignition and i've already noticed a bit of a problem here here we've got our new ignition cylinder uh, it's all nice looks good has keys hooks up but when we put the key in here this is a uh, fairly difficult to do one-handed put the key in bike turns on right that's all good but we're in neutral Flashing check engine light. Now, why could that be? The bike is at run. Well, um, here's what I found out after a brief, nope, after a brief internet search. <sighs> Mama, don't let your boys grow up to be motorcycle thieves. Here is what was attached. These are the contacts from the bottom of the switch, and you'll see in there that there is a resistor. Now, I don't remember how to read resistance values, but the way I understand it, this works like a first generation General Motors VAT system where it is just looking for a specific resistance on this gray wire. So I need to desolder that resistor there and splice it in line with this gray wire here, and then, uh, and then the bike should be good to go. Unfortunately, I have no idea where my soldering iron is. And uh, the store is closed, so. 
It's the next day. I went to Harbor Freight, bought a few things. And I love going to Harbor Freight here in Wichita because as you're going down the highway, you see on the right a sign for Home Depot. And then on the left, you see a similar shaped sign for Harbor Freight. And then you get to kind of choose your own destiny. Naturally, I almost always go left. Anyway, what we have here is a tap and die set and some left-handed drill bit slash screw extractors. So together, oh, I also got a, a cheap soldering iron to get me through the day. Not probably something I'm gonna use more than maybe twice, but hey, it'll do for now. I'm honestly surprised that I've gone this long without owning these tools because these are just an absolute must have. Uh, I've already got the correct tap loaded up. It is an M5 by 0.8, so that is the diameter, is a metric five, and the thread pitch is an 0.8. So we're just gonna take that over here and put it in one of the messed up holes and just gently give it a spin. And this, this, takes, this takes absolutely no effort. Like I could probably breathe on this and it would spin around. And we're just using this to uh, clean up those threads. We're not cutting new ones. Uh, otherwise I'd probably have some lubricant and whatnot and be taking this a little bit more seriously than I am. And that's all the way through. Take this back out. You can see I already did this one to great success, but now we're just gonna go ahead and give it a test with this one remaining screw that we have. Go ahead, stick it in there. And it just goes in beautifully. All right. So I'll have to go to the hardware store later and get three screws in, um, what was that, M6 0.8, I think? Get three more of those, and then we'll really be able to put that fuel lid on there, and that'll be fantastic. And uh, hopefully the bike will stop reeking of gas. Now the reason for the screw extractors has to do with this ignition. It is held in here with what are called security bolts, which is basically they put the bolt in and then the head, uh, it tw it's either twisted off or just all the, the, the part that you actually engage with a tool is removed somehow. So there's just a flat surface up in there on the bolts holding this in. So I will need to drill a hole and then use an extractor to get that out. And normally on a stock bike, that would involve taking off this triple clamp, flipping it upside down, putting it in a vise, all that sort of thing. I think I can actually do this just by removing this um, incredibly well attached headlight. And then I think I can actually get my drill in from the bottom. So I'm gonna give that a shot because doing more work to avoid doing work is kind of my MO. And uh, hopefully we can get this out of here and then I'll figure out what thread pitch those are. And I can go buy a couple of those bolts when I go get these bolts. And uh, then we'll be good to go. I'm also gonna need to solder in that resistor. I'll uh, desolder it from this harness, and I'll probably just strip some of this gray wire and cut it and splice it into there with some heat shrink, all nice and neat. I missed a bit. That's not exactly on center, but uh, I didn't end up needing the extractor. The drill bit itself just got right out. Red Loctite, pretty uh, gnarly stuff. Usually requires heat to remove. I did throw some penetrating oil on here. I have an aversion to doing things easy, the easy way. Instead, preferring what appears like it'll be easy. <laughs> I win conventional logic. Look at that. So it looks like you can throw that in the trash. I don't have a trash nearby. The ground works. And I need to go get two of these guys and three of these guys. And then solder and a resistor and this bike will be pretty much rideable again. I'm not in frame, but look how happy I am. Yay. This is 
pretty baffling. I got back from the hardware store, um, then decided let's uh, work on the ignition switch a bit. Out of curiosity, I took it apart to see, to make sure that there was no resistor there. And what I found is that there there is a resistor there, and it's the exact same resistor, but it's been cut. I, I can't conceive of why. It's going between the same two points, but it has been cut. Uh, and after taking a good close look at this, uh, I mean, I can see it is the same resistor. Annoyingly, I don't know if there's enough of a pigtail there for me to solder uh, to solder this resistor back in place, but I can certainly give it a shot, I suppose. Uh, if you want to learn how to solder, don't, uh, don't, don't do what I do. I wonder uh, how hard it is to get this off of here. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, it just came right out. Okay, now I should be able to solder this onto the key mechanism. Hopefully some of that was visible, but essentially what happened is I just completed this connection on this inline resistor here, or not inline, but this resistor that's kind of acting as a jumper. So now I'll need to figure out how this went together uh, and slap it back in the bike and make sure that starts. That is a tremendous relief. Let's go ahead and get this thing back on the bike. Looks like it goes this way. This isn't quite as big of a deal, but this is the latch for the uh, trunk here. Thought I might as well get that fixed up. So let's see here. Well, they're a bit mismatched, but I did have another bolt the right size, so that's pretty cool. And this goes back like how again? That is not even slightly clocked the right way. <laughs> What's going on here? That needs to be offset by 90 degrees. Problem is it looks like it's keyed, so I'm not sure if I can even do that. Okay, so I got that clip off, and this is definitely keyed to only go on one way, but here is the one from the old set, and it is keyed differently. So let's see if I can just... Looks like some tolerances might require a bit of opening up. Well, I do love a new toy. Bought this little file so that I can open up the clearances on this. Hey, look at that. All right. Well, that's a neat thing to have again. Not even remotely secure, but maybe one of these days I'll put the fairings back on here and uh, that'll be good to go. Also, check that out. If that ain't a nice thing there, got the hardware, and that is freaking solid. That is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's starting to look like a bike again. I think we're on day three now of working on the Kawasaki. Got it almost entirely ready for the road, except that when I was riding it around a bit before working into it, I noticed uh, this this chain, this chain just, uh, yeah, it, is, it needs to go away. So I bought a new one and I have absolutely no idea what any of this is or what I'm doing, uh, which is why I enlisted off some help. And uh, he also has the actual tool to do this properly. <laughs> uh, the, one tool, the one tool we are going to need is an angle grinder because we can't find the master link on this at all, so uh, it's just getting a choppy chop. That sounds safe. Let's do that. Bruh, this ain't going to buy a strand. Just give it some more sauce. More that. There you go. That thing is... You have an 8 millimeter socket. Uh, probably. Probably. Um, are you saying that you want an 8 millimeter socket? I, I require... Change. 
That's a nine. Actually, I'm pretty sure that I legitimately have like everything except for an eight over here. Oh, sick. Yeah, off so right do I here. just want to grind off that rivet there? No. I wouldn't. Oh, right, a tool. A tool. Yeah. So naturally I bought too long of a chain because it was just cheaper to do that. So we're gonna have to split it apart uh, in order to make it the proper length. And we actually have the tool for that uh, once we figured out how to actually use it. So that goes here. And we're gonna wanna tighten down the center so that it'll hold itself. And then... So what this little one does is it pushes the uh, the the tip in more and then the large one is used for actually driving it through and it just yeeted that thing out of there we oh those are two one. inside things <laughs> you were we right to, we needed to go one you're more. right i'm sorry Dave. <laughs> i'm sorry okay then. practice using the tool i guess yeah yeah <laughs> now we by the time we're done we'll know uh, what we're doing oh it's right here oh, ah, i found it i almost touched the camera i don't want to touch the camera <laughs> One thing we did just to make sure that we have enough adjustability for chain stretch is we went and ran the adjusters all the way in and pushed the uh, tire forward, which also get, let us take another link out of the chain. So now everything is copacetic and I don't have enough hands. How does, uh, so how does this go in? How does these Very carefully. How does so master link? How you do a link of the master is we're gonna line up those two things right there, right? So we have those two ends where that, those little, yeah thingies go through. So, Kirchhoff, you have your little O-ring there that we've greased. Stick that there. And another O-ring on that one. Kirchhoff. Then you'll put two more O-rings right here. There we go. <laughs> They're sticking to my and hands. And grab one of these little plate looking things. Is it, okay, so the plate goes first? Yes. Okay, and then this. And then your clip. You have to beat these on usually. Or, and then this clip will slide on. It's got little, uh, indentions where this will kind of like slide and snap into place. Okay. A few taps with the screwdriver, got that clip on. Now we just got to adjust the chain tension and we're good to go. So just gonna run these adjusters a bit with the ratchet and go for a ride, I guess. And with that, I think this bike's good to go ride. Just gotta tighten down the axle and put the cotter pin back in and uh, hit the streets. Well, I gotta say, the combination of not having three inches of slop in the chain, having a foot peg I can actually stand on, and being able to start the bike with a key instead of plugging in a bit of wire, um, this, this bike is definitely turning into something. It's an absolute riot just to flick around the streets, and uh, hopefully next time we're gonna get into some more uh, visual aspects of this thing. It's uh, it could use some work in that department. But until that Amazon shipment gets in, thanks for watching.